dear friends, how is it going? I hope I find you all in good health and safe and sound. I'm Ari Thuriger and today I'm going to talk about Lokyan as a term and as a contemporary religious and spiritual manifestation in which the main figure in focus is the old Norse entity Loki. This video, in part, is a sort of a study on contemporary religions and spiritualities, not my own experiences and beliefs, mind you, uh, but there's certainly space for a, a few perceptions in relation to becoming a Lokian and what it can mean. But I will start with a more general approach towards this particular expression of beliefs as such, and since this is a modern religious manifestation, I have relied on a series of interviews I have done and a lot more conversations, simple conversations with people who identify themselves as Lokians or in one way or another their personal experiences with Loki are quite relevant to the point of uh, conducting their own spiritual approaches towards the experiences and acquired knowledge through Loki. So for this video, as for our other videos I've done in the past concerning more recent religious manifestations of our contemporary time, there are no concrete sources a specific uh, bibliography because we are very much dealing in great part with people's uh, personal gnosis. So the source here is Trust Me Bro. Although uh, throughout this video I will avoid calling it unverified personal gnosis because um, I've already expressed on another video what I think about UPG, unverified personal gnosis, and I always like to make a clear division between the scientific work and the personal spiritual experiences people have. A scientific work does not invalidate UPG, or just personal gnosis. However, when we are delivering a work based on historical and archaeological sources of scientific work, it is important to not mix it with personal beliefs and experiences in order to properly understand the historical context. However, People's own experiences are important nonetheless. And just because our ancestors did things in a certain way and believed in what they believed, uh, that doesn't mean we should either continue to do the, the exact same things or repress our own unique experiences in order to only follow the ideas and beliefs of the past. There's no stopping our own interactions with the supernatural and the divine. And if it was right for our ancestors to have a continuous evolution of beliefs, why isn't it right for us to continue, at the very least, that evolution and to continue having different experiences, beliefs and creating new relationships with known and unknown entities? We may create relationships with already existing entities or known historical entities, but no one can prevent us from having new relationships with unprecedented entities who we come in contact with in our own spiritual endeavors and achievements. If it was right for our ancestors to make new gods, create new gods, it is right for us to at least make new contacts with entities we may or may not call gods. But no one can stop our imagination, our dreams and desires, our pursuit for knowledge, our out-of-body experiences, spiritual experiences, encounters, supernatural manifestations and magical religious behaviors, and of course the animistic mindset striving to create a relation with other than human and more than human persons. Uh, which is very much what we are dealing with here. Although a Lokian is creating a relationship with Loki or through Loki, a known entity of the late Iron Age Nordic religiosity. However, uh, this modern religious and spiritual manifestation has evolved and expanded its roots. And that is important to take in mind because, well, <laughs> I've made a video here before in the past concerning Loki precisely. Uh, the information that is possible to retrieve from old Norse mythology and belief systems. And I have stated on that video that Loki was never considered a god nor was Loki worshipped as such. 
And this created obviously some confusion because many Lokians see Loki as a god and interact with Loki with an understanding of interaction with a divinity. But again, the information and historical truth of the past does not prevent people from elaborating on their own spiritual beliefs and experiences and surely does not invalidate such behaviors. Loki may not have been understood as a god in the pre-Christian Nordic past, but that doesn't mean Loki was less than a deity or more, and certainly doesn't diminish Loki's importance in the past and uh, in the presence, of course. Sometimes we tend to project our own modern understandings of what constitutes a deity, and we often see a god the same way we understand a god in our very much colonized Western mind set, mindset through the lens of Abrahamic belief systems. So many have had a tendency, including I, to see Loki as a god due to its importance in the myths and the folklore uh, of the past and the literary sources. However, it's important to remember that when dealing with pre-Christian belief systems, and very much so Nordic heathenism of the past, we are still dealing with animistic worldviews, although admittedly no longer a fully animistic indigenous mind uh, or uh, uh, mindset uh, at the period at least, but, but still quite animistic. As such, uh, not every entity that has had a considerable importance in people's lives or daily lives and religious manifestations uh, had to be a god. There are several entities with known names or nameless that were and are quite important in people's lives and within an animistic perspective they do not have to be understood as deities, as gods. Uh, this is the case with Loki. In the past, as I've stated on that previous video about Loki, Loki wasn't understood as a deity, but rather, for lack of a, be a better term, a more than human person, an entity of the earth, the weather, the heat, the air, the fertility of crops, the trickster spirit, the semi-shaman cultural hero. Loki's importance in people's lives as the trickster spirit of change and the cultural hero of many adventures gave Loki an important place in the myths, being one of the, of the entities most written about in Old Norse literature, second only to Odin. And yet Loki wasn't understood as a god, nor there was any worship related to Loki. But Loki's importance was great nonetheless, as a spirit entity of the air and of the domestic environment people could count on. When an entity we create a relationship with becomes more present in our lives uh, than any other person, it doesn't have to be a deity to have a major place in our life and in our minds and hearts. Loki's popularity was expanded and sure enough nowadays Loki has been turned uh, in a, into, into a deity by many people. Loki may not have been understood as a god in the past as I've said, but again no one can stop people from having interactions, experiences and creating spiritual relationships with entities. As such Loki is nowadays finally seen by many as a deity, as a God. So, this is what I'm going to focus on today, or try to. Uh, modern religious manifestations towards Loki and the people who call themselves Lokian. And I give a special thanks, of course, to all of those who have shared with me their own experiences with Loki and the information you have passed concerning what is being a Lokian. So this video is about people's experiences as Lokians, a gathering of information that it may differ from people to people, obviously, naturally, but there are very interesting common factors I would like to express here. And I take the opportunity to ask you, uh, if you are a Lokian or have had any experiences with Loki, please feel free to share them in the comments and add more information to this study. It's always useful, not only from the perspective of studies on 
modern religious manifestations, but I'm quite sure it's also useful for modern pagans and modern heathens and so on and so forth, and people who enjoy sharing their experiences um, in order to construct a more concrete, better and intimate relationship with Loki. So, with no more delay, let's get started, my dear friends. Please. Lokian, as the name indicates, is someone who is into Lokianism and praises our Lord and Savior, Loki. Good gods, I hope it doesn't turn into that. But then again, anything is possible when it comes to Loki. <laughs> In very basic terms, the word or the term Lokian has been used to describe a heathen or a pagan or an animist or any other person whose spiritual experiences led the person to be a lot more focused on Loki, creating a strong and or a beneficial symbiotic relationship with Loki or a person with a perspective on Loki far more, let's say, positive and useful under each person's own goals and what they wish to achieve spiritually, of course, to the point that some people take Loki as their patron entity or, or, or even seen as a patron deity and as such Loki is included in their worship of deities, whichever they are. Or Loki has a considerable presence in people's relationships with the um, supernatural and certain magical religious and cultic behaviors are towards the entity Loki, regardless of being understood as a god or not. Lokians are therefore someone who worships or works with Loki as the primary deity in their personal practice. And indeed, I underline that many people include Loki in their own worship of other deities or working with several deities or in their magical religious conduct, ceremonies, festivities and performances, whichever they may be, because actually a great percentage of the people I have talked with come from several different ethnic and cultural backgrounds and may or may not include other known pre-Christian Scandinavian deities and, and entities in their own personal spiritualities as well as other deities and entities of several other, let's say, uh, pre-Abrahamic cultures, religions and belief systems. Loki has indeed become quite the modern phenomenon among several pagans of many different faiths, uh, many of which not even European, which is quite curious, right? Someone develops an interest and curiosity about a specific entity and will start to conduct an approach towards that entity, constructing a personal relationship with said entity. There are no specific laws that prevents a human from interacting with whichever entity it wants. Uh, there's appreciation for specific cultural and religious aspects. There's adoption or incorporation of such cultural and religious aspects. And um, this is quite curious when it comes to Loki, because it was Loki's popularity in the past that retained this non-god in literature and folklore. And it is Loki's popularity still that made this trickster spirit expand its influences worldwide. If you want to know, if you are interested in that, according to the several interviews and people I have simply have had a conversation with and they have shared their own experiences with Loki, um, the greatest percentage outside Europe comes from Latin American peoples, actually. Uh, most spe specifically from Brazil and only then the United States of America and Canada followed by a great percentage from Argentina and Mexico <laughs> as the, the greater percentage outside Europe. Uh, in Europe, um, the greater percentage comes naturally from Nordic countries, uh, Scandinavian countries first, and from Iceland. Although Loki ends up being all over the place, <laughs> especially because there is a re-emergence of animistic indigenous beliefs prior to Christianity and prior to Romanization, and the trickster spirits are playing an important role as figures of change and drivers of evolution within European neo-paganism and the efforts to engage with and be part of a more animistic indigenous worldview. And it may be this specific 
aspect of Loki as a trickster spirit, an historical aspect and not a modern interpretation that is also placing Loki in the personal spiritual performances within the black community, regardless of nationality. Basically, many who are Lokian consider themselves heathen or heathens. However, it is not mandatory, and many consider themselves Lokians, but not heathens. Opinions differ, I know. However, as much as some people engage on a fervent activity of controlling and usually uh, limiting people's own spiritual experiences, in practice, it cannot be done, actually, and, and it is a worthless effort, because people cannot control human personal experiences. No matter how hard some try, we cannot simply control the desires and passions within someone's mind. That's a freedom we can all still enjoy, and that is what makes us human, the ability to be creative. And it's that sort of freedom that is also present in Loki, as we shall see in a moment. The controversy that has always been present in Loki and the aspects of change and disregard for the divine rules has always been something that has inspired people. Loki is foremost a trickster spirit, and this is perhaps the key point that makes Loki such a famous entity. Even though uh, I've already made a video concerning um, trickster spirits in animism, which you can see right here in this information icon in this uh, right upper corner, uh, I think it is important to reflect upon that. Very briefly this time, don't worry. Uh, just so we may understand this attention and curiosity around Loki and why it's one of the very, very few entities whose presence, whose essence has been considerably growing without an established religious and political propaganda of a specific group, community, religious authority, or any other major movement of conversion and colonization, if you take my meaning. No one has established a religion around Loki and started to convert people into it. Or, in other words, uh, no one started to impose uh, and, and force people into a religious perception around Loki. It's Loki's sheer popularity and uniqueness that has awakened curiosity in people, leading to a natural desire to create some form of contact, interaction or relationship with this entity or deity. And personally, uh, I believe this is due to Loki's character as a trickster spirit. Taking into account the general traits of trickster spirits in several indigenous mythologies and folklore, as well as the role of the trickster in animism, we gather quite a few similar ideas and important characteristics that we also find in Loki, and which makes trickster spirits usually quite popular and the characters of several stories. Um, as Graham Harvey once stated, and I quote, if you please, tricksters seem archetypally and profoundly suitable to animist cosmologies and especially cosmogonies. Um, in world mythologies, especially to the animistic mind, the world and the cosmos are usually perceived as creations of both deities that have a particular plan and so they manifest their desires to achieve that plan through actions that in turn create realities and also creation is formed through an ambiguous encounter between order and chaos. This is when tricksters enter, who often present antisocial behaviors and their actions may also harm others and themselves, but it is this behavior of a non-human and non-deity entity that expresses the world and life in it more like it really is in lived experience, right? I hope you take my meaning. Tricksters often test and transgress the boundaries that orderly deities attempt to establish. From the original creation of the gods, the original plan of creation, there's a set of realities that exist that are created due to such creations. However, the trickster will make it possible for new spaces to be available, new realities 
which gives rise to new possibilities and new lives to thrive, which were neither intended nor imagined by the gods or by the tricksters themselves or any other entity or power involved in the process of creation. The trickster plays a role outside of the sphere of the gods, neither being limited or indeed even accepting the authority of higher beings or ultimate powers and orderly canons of creation. The trickster will challenge transcendence and will create the necessary conditions, often unexpectedly, to change reality, making it possible for the evolution of spaces and lives ultimately making it possible for the evolution of life itself and everyone involved becomes part of that unimagined and unplanned evolution. And the outcomes of the trickster's actions are as unexpected as the actions themselves because the trickster is not an orderly being with a consciousness focused on a preconceived plan but rather a lot more human in the sense that life changes as the trickster goes and experiences life because every action is outside a higher orderly plan, making the trickster a force that better expresses the experience of living and creating new realities. The cosmos and the world become a playground through the actions of the trickster because the playground may have been constructed for certain activities and, and structures with a purpose. There was a plan for this playground. But those who play in it and experience life in it will do several things that have nothing to do with the structure and the purpose for which the playground was created. There is imagination, creativity, spontaneous actions that are the fruit of experiencing life beyond the boundaries and limitations that have previously been established. Going beyond normality, preventing stagnation, not obeying to the rules and the systems that have been set that force to live a reality in a certain way, but rather breaking the system by giving freedom of thought and action. Tricksters are a challenge to the system of the gods themselves. They are a transcending force. They are transgressors because they make the cosmos and the world a little bit more habitable for everyone in it because they allow different realities to exist that had not been planned, intended, imagined or even created by the gods. The trickster gives way to new life to thrive. This is perhaps one of the main reasons why tricksters are so popular among human communities, because they show the possibility of not having to succumb uh, and even obey to the rules and to the systematic cycles of order. And this gives human communities the inspiration to also become tricksters in a way and transgress and transcend the boundaries and limitations of the cosmos and the world, the society, the community, and all the way down to the level of individuality, transgressing the limitations of the self. And whoever is familiar with the old Norse myths and, and poems and, and some folklore as well, in which Loki appears, finds these characteristic, characteristics sorry, of the um, trickster spirit. Loki is the trickster. Loki's actions cause all sorts of troubles which Loki is able to fix, but thereafter the world of gods and humans is never the same again and is changed forever, forcing evolution, continuity, preventing stagnation, forcing the gods and the humans to participate in the evolution of life and to be part of it and go with it, whether they like it or not. The, the trickster is the boundless and limitless creative imagination that makes life more entertaining, enjoyable and fascinating and also quite attractive. Some of you may probably remember the video I have done in the past about Rokathru, which is another neo-pagan religious manifestation which was probably one of the first concrete modern spiritualities within heathenry to express a set of practices and beliefs that included Loki among other entities and deities that were not often considered in Aosothru and other modern heathen religious expressions. 
the modern religious manifestations towards pre-Christian Nordic Iron Age deities started off through a focus on the gods, Aesir, and then there was the manifestation of Vanothru, which focuses more on the Vanir. So eventually came Rokathru as a term for those who prefer to focus a lot more on deities and entities of Norse cosmology that showed a more primitive aspect of humanity and deities that in the myths present themselves as being outsiders precisely of the usual and better known groups of gods or deities. Uh, and then uh, there is, of course, Thursa through, which also includes Loki. I've done videos for all of these religious manifestations, so I'm not going to focus on that again. The point here is that there may be a lot of Lokians with these per within these particular expressions of beliefs and practices, but they don't have to necessarily identify themselves as Roka Thruar or Thorsa Thruar or whatever. And the same people within these religious expressions don't often identify themselves as Lokians. These religious expressions may include Loke, but that doesn't make those people Lokians. And Lokians are not automatically people who subscribe to these particular expressions. Lokians, as said before, establish a more intimate relationship with Loke, or their practices are often conducted towards Loke. The focal point is Loke. Uh, there's always this tendency to have labels and to try to belong to a particular group, or a tribe, a community, and people often conduct their entire lives towards a label. And I wonder if Loki itself would approve of this, because, after all, Loki presents itself as a transgressor, an entity without limitations, beyond codes, laws, canons, beyond labels, beyond self-imposed mental limitations that force people to follow specific actions according to the label they have chosen to stick with. So, a Lokian doesn't have to belong to anything in particular, or conduct practice towards specific beliefs of a group. To do otherwise, in my opinion, <laughs> would not be a proper understanding of Loki as the trickster spirit. The trickster spirit. The very na natural and um, humane impulse of creating groups to identify people and what they are and where they belong to is ultimately the very mental limitation that prevents people from experiencing life at its fullest, because of the tendency to close ourselves in within some label and our actions become the label, become a limitation under the reality we have created to fit into that label and not getting out of it, otherwise that would ruin the capacity to understand people and to understand ourselves. <laughs> and that, in my opinion, is one of the greatest flaws within human history, to become a label. Everybody else that doesn't see themselves as a label and therefore conduct a life as they want and as they wish without the need to fit in into a particular title, group, label, category, are often people who end up being ostracized in society because others are not able to understand them, precisely because they don't limit themselves and their existence to a category that can be placed in a shelf, so others may be more comfortable and understand in what groups those people stand and who these people are. I think this is very much also the essence of Loki. Neither God nor human, but a trickster spirit. One of the very, very few entities in the Old Norse myths that goes as they please in and out of the realms of gods and humankind, freely entering the realms of the giants as well, and passing every boundary, every physical and even political limitation, not bound to anything, yet binding everything with its presence. The interaction with everything and everyone, and no one holds Loki as their own. Loki belongs to no one, and yet belongs to all which again reports back to the trickster spirit in indigenous societies and animistic communities. 
an expression of the true lived experience. Not sticking to a particular group, category or label allows the person to be whoever they want to be and experience life from different perspectives outside any sense of belonging that often binds the body, mind and spirit to particular limiting aspects of life. I am not saying that Lokians are all like this because they are not. They are very good. They are all very different from one another. What I'm saying is that when we shift perception because we transgress and transcend notions that limit us to a specific identity bound to place, community, ethnic group, culture, language, religion, and even politics, we start to see ourselves as persons of the world experiencing life as we go. Instead of persons of a specific country, or specific groups within a group within a group. The freedom from the illusion of a self-identity which will then set us loose upon the world as persons of the world, of everywhere we wish to be, interacting with whomever we want. And if we ourselves stop understanding our individuality as something attached to space and time and group, there's nothing that can stop us from experiencing life and discovering life itself, which makes it available several possibilities that before had neither been intended nor imagined. In a way, I think this is a good way to understand Loke, to become the transgressor, to free ourselves from the illusions that binds us to a limited experienced reality that often goes in circles and stagnates. But that is just my opinion. Calm down. <laughs> On a way that perhaps helps us to better understand Loki as the animistic trickster spirit. Loki isn't a limitation. Loki is freedom to experience life. Loki is transformation, transgression, transcendence. All the different Lokians I have talked with some have specific rules to become a Lokian, of course. Some believe that a certain practice has to be conducted in order to establish the grounds to be or to become a Lokian. There are specific prayers, even offerings, even sets of rules and codes, a specific conduct, and even a whole set of behaviors and performances to become a Lokian. I am not disputing that and people do whatever they want to do and believe in whatever they want to believe. After all, freedom of thought and freedom of action is essential to experience life. However, at the same time, it becomes a paradox when a set of rules and conduct and performances is established to specifically become a Lokian. The freedom of creativity ceases to exist when, in our own freedom, we have reached a point that made us establish particular distinctions in order to be something. From the moment we start to control and even limit the access of people into something and to be something, we have already started to walk towards stagnation and on the opposite direction of what Loki as a trickster spirit represents. So what is to be done when we reach this point? I guess the same thing any trickster spirit would do. Refuse to succumb to a label and instead become whoever we want to be in order to enjoy the lived experience and make it possible for everybody else to enjoy, to also enjoy it. Instead of closing ourselves in into, in into some orderly construction of space and existence, abandoning the labels, abandoning self-identifications and perceptions of a singular identity, throw into the fire the old self and become the very trickster, the force of change and evolution that does not belong to any system that dares control imagination and creativity. Just like the trickster spirit, just like Loki, becoming self-governable and yet ungovernable. <laughs> Alright, my dear friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and hopefully this was useful in some way. Thank you for your time and patience. See you on the next video. And as always, Tak for
Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Farewell, my dear friends.